This next video is pretty long. It's called the CERN Large Hadron Collider uses 8 billion EV beams creates Higgs boson particle 18th June 2012. It's a picture of the actual collider. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN where scientists continue their hunt for the Higgs particle. The photographs from Mark Thiessen National Geographic Society Corpus. Okay. Okay, two beams of protons circulate around the 27 kilometer circumference of the Large Hadron Collider. Tunnel under the Franco-Swiss border. Those protons moving clockwise collide head-on and with those moving anti-clockwise and the collisions take place in the middle of a cavernous detector. Just so you know, I'm quoting whatever I find on different blogs and I put the notes together on here and then I compile all the keywords from it, okay? The scientists working on two of these detectors have made it their immediate priority to find the much vaunted Higgs particle. And towards the end of last year, the first tentative evidence of the particle's existence was made public. And that was put out on in the Guardian.co.uk on June 17, 2012. Atlas Experiment Director Fabiolo Giannotti from www.australianscience.com.au Quote from Wiki, Fabiola Giannotti, Italian pronunciation, Fabiola Di Zanotti, born 1962, is an Italian particle physicist in charge of the Atlas experiment at the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, at CERN in Switzerland. Considered the world's biggest scientific experiment. Giannotti holds a PhD in experimental subnuclear physics from the University of Milan, Italy. She joined CERN in 1987, working on various experiments, including the UA2 experiment and ALEPH on the Large Electron-Positron Collider. The precursor to the LHC at CERN, her thesis was on data analysis for the UA2 experiment. Giannotti began working on locate argon calorimetry, sorry, I don't know how to say it, at the LHC in 1990 and continued that work for ATLAS when the collaboration began in 1992. Giannotti also worked on LEP2 supersymmetry search between 1996 and 2000. Giannotti is also a member of the Physics Advisory Committee at Fermilab, the Particle Physics Laboratory at Batavia, Illinois, a trained pianist. She has a professional music diploma from the Milan Conservatory. August 17, 2012, 12.19 a.m. My thoughts. The CERN UA2 experiment is liquid argon calorimetry, LLHC, ATLAS, LEP2 supersymmetry search. All your data needs to be combined with the well study data videos formulas in lines 17 to 22 as of 16th of August, 2012. So I'm going to Google liquid argon calorimetry so I can find out what it means. For the electromagnetic calorimetry, calor, calorimeter, I don't know how to say this, in ATLAS is chosen a liquid argon sampling calorimeter. Layers of lead, stainless steel, and liquid argon are interspaced. The lead gives the Chardell development with its short radiation length, and the secondary electrons create ionization in the narrow gaps of liquid argon. An inductive signal from the ionization electrons drifting in the electric field across the gas gap is registered by copper electrodes. So this is what their thing looks like. It's a trigger tower, it says. It's all the things. A diagram I found of what they do. So this is the structure of the barrel accordion calorimeter. The pre-sampler is in front of the accordion. To achieve a low cap capitance of the detecting elements and thereby a fast signal, the lead plates have an accordion shape as shown in figure 4.5. At the same time, this creates a fully homogeneous calorimeter in the X coordinate, or whatever that coordinate is called. In the central rapidity region, there are four samplings. Pre-sampler, a single thin layer of argon, but no lead absorber in front. The purpose is to correct for the energy loss in the inner detector, solenoid and crystal stat wa cryostat wall. The first sampling. The first sampling has a depth of 4.3 radiation lengths. The readout is as seen in figure 4 of our point in thin N strips. Each strip has the size of the triangle, the N, the X, the triangle, and the X. 
equals 0031 times 0 0.018. This provides an excellent resolution in the end coordinate for photon pio separation. The x coordinate is not suited for this since converted photons will open up in the magnetic field and produce clusters with width similar to pi zero clusters. So uh, the reason I'm looking at all this is because I never heard of the Higgs boson. Like I've seen it in the wild videos, but I never knew what it meant. And so I had to really um, study everything about it so I know how to create formulas for it because I want to know what I'm dealing with. So the second sampling is the majority of the energy is deposited in the 16 radiation lengths of the second sampling. Clusters with energy below 50 GeV are fully contained and the noise can be reduced by not adding the third sampling. For the positron measure measurement of the cluster, the two coordinates are equally important resulting in square cells of size. And there's those symbols again. I don't know what they mean. So there's the coordinates for that. So there's a third sampling. Um, on the highest energy electrons will reach this deep in the detector. The clusters are at this point wide and the cell size can be doubled in the end direction without loss of resolution. In the end cap, there is less material in front of the Keller meter and the free sampler can be avoided. The end cap EM Keller meter starts at N and 1.5 and continue down to N. See, well, there's different. There's a crack with bad energy resolution where the end cap and barrel calorimeters meet. This is all Greek to me, just so you know. I have no idea what this means. A large effort has gone into reducing the size of the crack while still leaving space for cables and cooling for the inner detector. Re resolution of the end calorimeter is. There's the calculations for that now. Very small. I don't know how you guys read this stuff without your glasses. With energy is measured in GeV, the sampling term A is defined by the number of lead argon interfaces and 8 to 11 percent depending on rapidi rapidity. Rapidity. Noise influences the resolution at the lowest energies through the term B, which is of the order 400 MeV when running at high luminosity. The constant term affects the resolution for high energy clusters and is limited by the calibration of the global energy scale and local variations in this. It is hard to predict what is but is believed to stay below 0.7%. To withstand the high radiation levels in the forward region, the hadronic color meter is also of liquid argon type in the end caps. The design is simpler than the EM color meter and has parallel copper plates as absorbers placed perpendicular to the beam. The very forward hadronic color meter with a coverage down to N, um, 4.9, is made of copper tungsten. So those are keywords there. The choice of copper tungsten is necessary to limit the width and depth of the showers from high energy jets close to the beam pipe and to keep the background level low in the surrounding color meters from part particles spraying out from the forward region. The color meter is a me metal matrix with cylindrical holes. The holes have rods inside with a slightly smaller radius allowing for a liquid argon gap of just 250 and there's a U symbol M. The small gap limits the sensitivity to pile up effects which are large close to the beam pipe where energetic jets often hit the same area of the calorimeter. And that's from www.hep.lu.se. So notes on research, August 17th. Massive Higgs boson, so you take aether or ether plus electromagnetic waves plus matter plus no resistance and that gives you a Higgs boson particle. An equation above C is by itself. New formula C divided by D, which is D is for deuterium. The keywords in the data research on Google. Resolutions of EM color meter, argon beam, and D atomic number is deuterium. Quote, the carol meter is a metal matrix. Of course, I didn't know what they were talking about, so I had to find out what it meant. So this is basically, I find keywords and then I look them up on Wiki to see what they mean. The Keller meter is a metal matrix with cylindrical holes. The holes have rods inside with a slightly smaller radius allowing for liquid argon gap of just 250U. M. Small gap limits the sensitivity to pile up effects 
which are large, close to the beam pipe where energetic jets often hit the same area of the kilometer. And that's www.hep.lu.se. So my thoughts. Oh, there's the rest of the link there. My thoughts. You is the quarks up in the standard model or muon. Quarks up plus the muon plus the metal matrix plus the cylindrical holes. We're going to cross-reference the WOW data. Metal matrix and 14 videos are found. So what I mean is I googled in my own data here when I do my search on all the notebooks. I put the word metal matrix and 14, uh, 14 of the WOW videos came up that had that word in it. Interesting, isn't it? So the keywords, metal, so so what I did was I went and looked through the videos to see what the keywords were that looked about matrix and what was the word closest to it or what what was it talking about. And I got matrix resin, four square root, five twenty eight symbols meaning, and the key number is four two seven eight seven eight four. Quote from the data in the wall video, uh, 4278784 is a patent number for an encapsulated electronic devices and encapsulating. Said resin encapsulated electronic devices are amazingly lessened in formation of cracks by thermal stress and have reliab high reliability. My thoughts, is this, is this, is some, <laughs> I can't even read my writing. This is some sort of formula for space for a. I see. Is this some sort of formula? That's what it was. Never mind. No, not type. Is this some for, sort of formula for a space travel vehicle? And this is what they use so no cracks happen from thermal stress. So I'm going to Google ma metal matrix resin, and that's. Uh, this came up. Coles da Vassermate the name of it. So from Wiki it's the quote, a cloth of woven carbon fiber filaments. Now this is interesting because I'm looking at some other data about the WOW video right now and it's talking about these carbon filler filaments being used with hydrogen storage. So this, this is where I saw, I couldn't remember where I saw it but now I know. So this is a cloth of woven carbon fiber filaments, a common element in composite materials. Composite materials, often shortened to composites or called composition materials, are engineered or naturally occurring materials made from two or more constituent materials with significantly different physical or chemical properties which remain separate and distinct within the finished structure. And then there was a PDF file that came up. Process for the preparation of fiber reinforced metal matrix composites from James Garfield Robertson. Um, it says a process for the preparation of a fiber reinforced metal matrix composite comprising fibers embedded in a metal in which the process comprises forming a body with a layer of aligned fibers. Between at least two layers of metal foil and de densifying said layers wherein the layer of aligned fibers comprises metal particles interposed between individual fibers, the metal particles being compatible with the metal foil. A preform for a fiber reinforced metal matrix composite is also claimed which comprises a resin and a layer of aligned fibers. The layer having metal particles interposed between adjacent fibers and the layer and particles being bonded together with resin with the resin. The inventor's name is James Garfield Robertson. Patent number is five nine three three seven zero three from nineteen ninety seven. Okay. And that's just the database information there about his uh, patents. All the different things he can do with it. He says, the claims are a preformed body for a fiber reinforced metal matrix composite which comprises a resin and a layer of aligned fibers. Said layer having metal particles interposed between adjacent fibers and said layer and particles being bonded together with the said resin. Said layer containing 0 0.5 to 20 WT percent metal particles by weight fibers. More on the website www.google.com and then forward slash patents and then forward slash US 5933703.
Okay, so that's the end of that video. Um, there's a lot more videos for the Higgs boson, and I'm just doing some research on it. Thank you for watching.